on today's episode of the Cryptoverse. Venezuela releases the Petro white paper ahead of their $5 billion ICO. All of that on today's episode of the Cryptoverse, so stay right there. Hi there guys, welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I'm your host, Chris Coney. So this has been coming for a little while now. It's just a case of getting more and more details on exactly how this is going to roll out as we move towards the actual launch. So the Petro is a cryptocurrency that the Venezuelan government have been planning to launch and back it with the country's huge oil reserves. Almost sounds like an alternative to the petrodollar, doesn't it? Dangerous territory if you ask me. You know, the US tends to get a little bit upset when anyone challenges the dominance of the dollar. And they call it the petrodollar because it's the world's reserve currency and most of the oil in the world is traded with the US dollar. And that gives the USA a a disproportionate amount of power to do things like embargoes on countries that don't behave themselves. So the Petro, it's going to use Ethereum, but only to conduct the ICO. So it's going to be an ERC-20 token. But after the token sale, those ERC-20 tokens will be swapped for the native tokens on the Petro platform. So the president of Venezuela, Nicolas Maduro, he's now officially signed off on the white paper for release. And if you don't believe me, you can go to El Petro, E-L Petro, dot G-O-B dot V-E, because here you can read and download the white paper for yourself. After a bit of blurb, you find this big button here that says download white paper. Now this is a significant milestone in crypto history. This is the first example of a nation state doing an ICO. Did you ever think you would see the day? Unfortunately, they're not using a public blockchain, but at least it's progress nonetheless. I mean, an actual government opting to participate in a new economy built by the people, that's setting a big precedent, right? This is the first domino. I mean, feel free to read all the official materials yourself, but I've picked out a few highlights for you. There's always this question of how does a cryptocurrency acquire value? Well, here in the red, it says... The Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela guarantees it will receive Petro as a form of payment for national taxes, fees, contributions and public services, taking as a reference the previous day's Venezuelan oil basket price with a discount. This will ensure that the buyer always has a return value adjusted to the value of their their investment. Interesting, but it gets better. In the orange here, it says, in addition... The Venezuelan government is committed to promoting the use of the Petro in the domestic market and doing the efforts necessary to stimulate its acceptance throughout the world. I'll say it again, that is not going to go down very well with the US government, in my opinion. It's a shame they didn't actually opt to build this thing on Ethereum, because then it would have been truly unstoppable. The downside to that, of course, is that the Venezuelan government would then be giving up a bit too much control, right? Plus... Ethereum doesn't currently have the capacity they might need to process a lot of transactions. Now, I said a minute ago that the Petro acquires its value because the Venezuelan government will accept it as payment for taxes and whatnot, but that's more the answer to the question of where demand will come from. Its value is actually derived from a barrel of oil. So, like, the initial price of a Petro is set to be around $60. Then if the price of oil rises, then the Petro should follow. It's basically tokenizing Venezuela's oil, right? Except it's so much easier for the average person to acquire. It sort of levels the playing field in exactly the way that we've been waiting for since blockchain technology came about. Now, I say the average person can acquire it. However, there is a bit of a caveat. If I scroll down to the yellow bit here, it says, if you wish to exchange your PTRs, your Petros, for another type of crypto asset or fiduciary currency, You only need to access any one of the electronic trading sites authorized by the Republic or any of the international exchanges that accept Petros. So 
who knows you know, which exchanges will be selected and what kind of limitations there might be on who's allowed to trade it and who isn't, you know? So in conclusion then, suffice to say, I have my reading material set for today, right? I shall duly digest the white paper and see what else I can find in there. One fact to bear in mind is that Venezuela has the highest amount of proven oil reserves in the world, more than Iran, more than Canada, even more than Saudi Arabia. And the other fact to note is that the hard cap for the Petro ICO is $5 billion. That's 4.5% of the entire market cap of Ethereum at today's prices. So whether you choose to participate in the ICO or not, if it hits its hard cap, well, that could cause a major pump in the price of Ether leading up to it. So bear that in mind as we do move towards the launch of the pre-sale for this ICO, which is going to be on the 20th of February. So thanks very much for joining me today, guys. If you like this episode, go ahead and hit that like button. And if you're new around here, get subscribed. If you would like access to my very best material, such as my structured online courses, then you can head over to my website, cryptoversity.com. You can click on courses and either take an online course or you can come and see me this weekend live in London when I'll be doing an evening talk. Or if you want to spend more time with me, then the following week, the 10th of February in London, I have a one day crypto investing workshop. If you want to spend the day with me learning how to get started investing in cryptocurrencies. Other than that, guys, I'll be back tomorrow, which is Friday. So it's going to be live stream day tomorrow. So make sure you tune into the live stream 1 p.m. GMT. I'll be live doing a rapid roundup of Q&A and much news on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. Please join me for that. Until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.